Go ahead. 5 dash 7, no? 8. So 5 dash 8 and 9 are done together. Naiva kinchit karuniti. Naiva kinchit karuniti. Yukto manyete tatvatit. Yukto manyete tatvatit. Jigran. Nashnan gachan swapan shwasan. Nashnan gachan swapan shwasan. Pralapan visrijan grihanan. Pralapan visrijan grihanan. Nun mishan nimishan api. Nun mishan nimishan api. Indriyan indriyarthishu. Indriyan indriyarthishu. Vartanta itidharayan. Vartanta itidharayan. It's really fun. These are all, if you want to learn Sanskrit, this is the best shloka. It gives you all the verbs. Yeah. So, naiva kinchit karometi. I do not do anything at all. Yukto manyete tatvavit. Yukto is the one who has established himself in the self. Now we've done yukto, remember? Bhagavad Gita 1, 2. Yukta and ayukta. And yukta is the one who is established in the self. Ayukta is the one who is lost in the world. We have done this. So, yukto is that yukta, the one who is established in the self. Manyete, he thinks like this. Tatvavit. Thus, thus, or therefore, in English. So, second part. The first line is Naiva Kinchit Karumiti Yukto Manyete Tatvavit. I do nothing at all, I do not do anything at all. Thus will the Yukta or the one established in the self think. Pashyan. Pashyan is to see. Shrunvan is to hear. Sprishan. Touch. Jigran to smell. Nashnan to eat. Gachan to go. Swapan to sleep. It's actually dreaming. Swapna, you know, swapan. Sleeping, dreaming. Shwasan. Last one is of that sutra. Shwasan is to breathe. Shwas. Shwasan. Pralapan. To speak. Visrijan. To let go of excreta, sweat, toxins from the body. Visrijan. Grihnan is to grab or to seize or to take. Nun mission literally means closing the eyelid or closing eyes. Nimishanapi, opening. Opening. Opening and closing the eyelids. Opening as well. Indriyan Indriyartheshu. 
the senses move amongst the sense objects. Vartanta iti dharayan. He is convinced of this. What does this mean? Such two big sutras. Why is he talking about <clears throat> all this eating, sleeping, sitting, doing this, doing that? <coughs> what does he say? He's seeing all this as involuntary. We see what, involu what is involuntary? Breathing. Yeah, my heart beating. I'm not doing it. If it was in my hands, I would never let the heart stop. Breathing. Yeah, I would never let the breath stop. I would go on living, living, living. Yeah, the mind does not want to stop living. Recognize this Jeevishna. That's why... Luckily, Niyati, God, whoever decided that to make sense, you know, something should not be in their hands and did not give us something. Yeah? But the Yukto, the harmonized, the equanimous yogi, what does he see? He says, everything is involuntary. He says, everything is just this energy moving through this Prakriti. Indriyar, Indriyan, Indriyar Teshu means it is just the senses which move because of the energy in the sense objects. Beautiful girl, handsome guy, sense object, beautiful movie, sense object, beautiful sunset, beautiful mountain, anything that I see outside and I get stuck is my senses just going out and getting stuck in the object of sight. The yogi sees everything as involuntary. Everything is just happening through me. I am just an instrument. He's convinced. Vartante iti dharayan. He's convinced it is like this only. He sees that energy flows of its own accord. Yeah, that energy suddenly was flowing in the mother and in the father. They come together and I was born. Was I asked, do you want to be born now? Was I asked, do you want this parent? It's all involuntary. I came, I had to be. I had to go through that. Everything is involuntary. Every karma comes from the past. Some person suddenly comes in my life, some situation comes, it's all involuntary. Everything is involuntary, he's saying. So why should I drop my, you know, level to that state where I start feeling I am the doer? This is like begging. Chitty Guruji said, na? stop being a beggar. Yeah? Be a giver. Drop, let go. The seizing, grabbing, all this is just of the mind. It's all happening. A yogi sees it as a happening, not as a doing. Everything, every small action. These are just few sutras, few verbs put over there. And why these were chosen? Because they probably rhymed well with each other. Yeah? But the intention is everything in this 
world. Everything that I do from the day I am born to the day I depart. Everything is really involuntary. It's happening. Where is the doer? Who is the doer? Who is going to do? So drop this big ego. I, I, I. Because I is the one that says, no, I am the doer. I am doing or I am not doing. Both is doership. He says, drop, let go. Open your hands. You are the one clenching onto this doership. You are the one holding onto it. You are the one saying, I am doing this. This is mine. This is really a disease. Mine, mine, mine. Disease, really. You're sick and you need a doctor. There's just one doctor, really. Only he can cure you. Yeah. So drop. This is the biggest disease. The ego. Yeah. Everything is involuntary. Homework number two, from this moment on, whatever you do, even when you stand up, look at it, this is involuntary. You start walking from here, you look at it, this is involuntary. You're driving, this is involuntary. It is being propelled by some energy which is moving through this piece of prakriti. That's all it is. Everything that is happening is involuntary. I'm going home, I go home, I cook, I eat. I sit with family, I sleep, everything is involuntary. Yeah? You go to work on Monday, everything is involuntary. The boss is screaming at me, involuntary, it's just happening. Seen a puppet show? Can the puppet say, oh, I am doing, I am dancing? Strings are attached to you and everything you are doing at the command of the strings. That's your homework number two. Yes? All will become puppets for the evening. Is that similar to what they get in the dream? Just a whole story. Absolutely. You have to see for it and what it would be. Beautiful. He's talking about Yoga Vashishta. In Yoga Vashishta, those who don't know, it says that everything is a dream. Like when you are sleeping in the night, and you dream really that you are in this fearful forest with lots of lions and tigers and animals and they are all coming at you and you are actually fearful. In reality, sleeping on your bed, you start sweating and you wake up with a fright. Doesn't this happen? How did that happen? It was only a dream, no? Even in dream, you experienced all that, yeah, the signals of the body. Yes. Vashishta says, this lifetime, we all sitting here, all of us are actually in a dream. We are dreaming somewhere that we are in this body doing exactly this. This is a dream. This is not real. So you have no control. That's you see what you think of. Absolutely. That is why he's saying it's involuntary. It's just happening. But once the dreamer wakes up and he knows he was just dreaming, that's the stage of enlightenment. <laughs> the entire exercise is to wake you up. All Krishna is doing is wake up, wake up, up, get up. That's all he's doing. Yes, so high time guys, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying my dream. <laughs> really, these scriptures are like that alarm, you know, where you can hear the alarm, but you're still so somewhere pulled in your dream. You want to get up maybe and then you're pulled in your dream. You're in that state. Yeah, this is a very lucky state actually. Very few lucky people reach this state where they can hear the alarm but they are somewhere still deep stuck in that dream state. Yeah, It may seem like a struggle right now but you are the luckiest. I tell you there are people who are sleeping like dead donkeys out there. 
they just cannot hear the bells and the alarms and the dongs and everything possible, drums. They just cannot hear it. At least somewhere you have this struggle. Yeah, good. You are on the path. Very few and lucky ones reach this stage. Yeah? So recognize this. I am just a puppet. Puppet of my own dreams. Huh? Now don't start thinking, oh, there's somebody else who's pushing my buttons. Nobody else is responsible. My karma shows me I am responsible for what is happening to me. So basically, I am only pulling my own strings. Right now, I am in a dream. Yes? <laughs> so that homework number two, add part B. Where you see everything as involuntary, you know? So you will stop saying, I am hungry, I am tired. No. Legs are tired, stomach is feeling hungry, yeah? the tongue is thirsty. Yeah? The ego wants to say, I don't like you. Yeah? You talk like that. Third person. Yes? That's the homework for the evening and rest of tomorrow. You will not say I. No I. My mind or the mind of the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, speak in third person. Yeah, okay. Everything is happening to this body. Like Golam. Golam? A <laughs> lot of things. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 So that's your homework. And if your kids think you've gone crazy, it's okay. So be it. <laughs> Mom and dad are crazy anyways. It's okay. <laughs> I'm think crazier. Crazier today. <laughs> the stomach is hungry. <laughs> Don't say, let me eat. I interaction with kids and I'll be like, that's really cool. I'm going to talk about myself in third person. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to get away with it. Okay, so I give you three homeworks, no? What are the three homeworks? One. I give you one first earlier, no? Antar Mukhi or Bahir Mukhi? Figure out. Think. You have the whole evening. Please do not waste it in front of the TV, gossiping, fighting with your spouses. Please sit and think. Go through your notes. Yeah? Homework number two? Everything is involuntary. Whatever is happening is involuntary. Yes? And part B of that is to help you speak in the third person. No eyes. You will not use I. So you will practice this right now. You will sit in groups of five. Yeah? Quickly. Sit with somebody you don't know. Don't sit with family. <laughs> in the group, you will... Rugo, rugo. In the group, you will talk about yourself in the third person. You will not say I or mine. You will say, Ghazal lives here, Ghazal does this, Ghazal's stomach is paining right now. That's how you will speak. Got it? Start. Two minutes. Everybody has to introduce yourself just in five sentences. Huh? Don't go on and on. Life story nahi hai. <laughs> five sentences each. Or five things each about yourself. Come on. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which boy? It's only me. <laughs> it's not that you got it. Moe didn't learn it from Gita. <laughs> very nice. Excellent. Jay Shiv is very easy connecting to people. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it was unnatural for Gaga. Mm hmm. It took the brain some time to get used to it. It 
was very awkward and the tongue was making a lot of mistakes. Ah, so nice. <laughs> uh, Jayashri just attended uh, Edwan's course uh, during New Year's and we did this for five minutes. Mm. And it was really nice. Mm. <laughs> So now we will go into the final part of today's day, the meditation for the gap. You are clear about the first part, the first technique. It's happening with everybody. Yeah. Any questions? All good, na? Yeah. So now again we will practice the gap. Now we'll add the second step to the gap. And what is the second step? Whatever ragas and dveshas come up, I drop. Yes? So now ragas and dveshas will start coming. They don't come the first day because, you know, you're still learning the technique. Now the mind will start taking it for granted. And now ragas, dveshas can come up. Yeah? So just observe if any raga, dvesha, I like, I dislike, I don't want this, I want that. You have to drop, keep dropping. So the second part of the sutra is moving away from external contacts. Literal translation from the Sanskrit. We'll do the sutra in the end. Just moving away from external contacts is the second step. External contacts do what to you? Either I like this or I dislike this. Either I want this or I don't want this. Yeah. Either I agree with this or I disagree with this. So many dwandvas come up because of an external contact. I might not <laughs> physically be talking to somebody I like or dislike, but I might be thinking about him no, in my head. You are still in contact with that person. I may hate somebody, I might have had a fight and I'm sitting and I'm meditating and focusing on the gap but again and I'm thinking about this person I really hate. I'm lost in a dvesha. Got it? So, cutting off the external contacts totally is the second part of the practice. Yes, and this had to come after the nishkam part to understand really. Yes, it has to be nishkam devoid of any desire. Yeah. That is the part of cutting away all external contacts. Yes. So that's the second part of the technique. Is it clear? Step 2 is clear. So we'll do the same thing. We'll listen to the chimes. Focus on the gap. If you want to Stop and pause at the gap the way you pause in pranayam. It's okay. Yeah. And just keep observing. How long can you hold the breath inside and outside? Again, hold it inside. Again, hold it outside. Don't do jay breath. Has to be normal breath. Yeah. How much ever you can hold and observe. Yeah. Any questions? No? Yeah, basically it's cutting off external contacts. So even if I don't have a raga or dvesha, but I'm thinking about Meera. I'm thinking. Cutting off external contacts. Not shaking hands with any thought. Nishkam. Any thought about anything, any person is a kam, is a desire. No thought. At all. Oh, my leg is hurting. Oh, my back is paining. Is a thought. Is a calm. Understood? So, in the sutra it is cutting of external contact. Cutting of any thought. Clear? Huh. Like, when you are breathing in and breathing out, <coughs> all the 
this uh, thought that normally comes to you in the time of breathing in or breathing out. But when you are at that base point where at that at that point of time you don't have any thoughts at all. So what is it that we need to observe there? The raga and dvesha that comes during the in-breath or the out-breath will linger in the gap. Two minute light on. The raga and dvesha that came, the thought that came when I was breathing in will tend to linger in the gap. Stay in that gap. It does not go away. And if I'm entertaining that particular thought, then I'm spoiling the peace of that gap. The nothingness of that gap. That is why break away external contacts. But we, we have learned yesterday that when there is no breathing, when, when you are at that point of it, there is no mind. Mm. Okay. Mm. Do we get that particular thing? I mean, I have tried to experience that thing the moment when you come out, whether it is a raga or any thought. Mm. At that point of time, I am being in silence at that particular second. I mean, Beautiful. Now just carry it into your out breath again. And then carry it from that pause into your in breath. Oh. Just carrying it into the breath. Because a thought can come when I am breathing in deeply and I am you know, oh, feeling tired. It's a thought. Again in the gap, it goes away. Yeah, But don't even entertain that thought. If you entertain thoughts, what will happen? You'll take this process for granted and you'll only be thinking. You'll drop the observing of the gap. You got what I'm saying? To maintain the discipline of observing the gap, they put in the second step. Cut off external contacts. See, the drop the Raga Dvesha, can we uh, take the mantra? Not uh, support? No. It's not external contact is a word, is a sound. Doesn't matter if it's from somebody else's lips or mm -hmm. from my own mind. Yes. External contact. Oh. So even Sarat Mantra also? No, nothing. Just observe the gap. Hmm. When you say cut the thought, I mean, what is it? Telling yourself that this is not me? I mean, what do you mean by cutting, cutting that thought? Okay, that's the language in the sutra, cutting off. But basically what you are doing is letting go, drop. Just be in the gap. Why I'm telling you is this, slowly, slowly your mind takes this process for granted. It started taking Kriya for granted, have you noticed? Yeah? So the effect of Kriya has started, you know, minimizing, minimizing. That's the tendency of the mind. Yeah? This tendency of the mind has been recognized by Lord Krishna. And he has put it very clearly. Drop. Any thought that comes, let go. Let go. What is the meaning of let go? Jayashree said this to me. First thought comes. What do I do? Do I let it go? Then I said this. Then she said this. Then I said this. Then she said this. Then a dialogue starts. An inner dialogue. You got it? I have to... Drop this formation only of the inner dialogue. At the first thought, let it come, let it come. No holding on to the thought. This is the meaning of cutting an external contact. If you are acting as a third person, I mean if you are being a witness, then why do I need to do all this? Perfect. If I am being a witness, it will come and it will go. Witness does not start talking. It's the same thing. Be a witness or cut off external contact. Same thing. Yeah, but it is emphasized in the second step. Intentionally emphasized. So that your mind does not take it for granted. Yes? It will get tougher tomorrow, huh? So add the second step today. And today... We'll meditate longer. It's not going to be two and five minutes. Yes? In complete silence. See if you can just be still. It's okay to take a back rest. Move around if you want. Take a back rest so that you don't move at all. 100% still and just observing <coughs> the gap.
All set? Huh. Ready? All set? Eyes closed. Sit comfortably. Yeah, if you liked that thing in the morning, you can do this mudra. It's nice. Yeah, if you like that feeling of the pulsation there, it's good. Keep your eyes closed.
शिष्यते Deep breath in and let go. Take another deep breath in and out. And when you feel complete, very slowly. And grand. 
eventually to run speed and open your eyes. So add this as your third homework. The night before you sleep, observe the gap, dropping all ragas and dveshas, cutting off all external contacts and thoughts of <coughs> external contacts and emotions related to external contacts completely. And maintain this silence. The mind is very silent now, no? If you don't need to practice in your groups, you're done with your practice, you can quietly leave and be with the silence. Don't talk too much in the evening. Just be with yourself and be with what we did today. So go home quickly and go to sleep. No TV, no gossiping. Just be absolutely silent. Take care. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev.